Hey folks, welcome back to another episode here at Time Out Kitchen, where today I'm going to be talking about something that I've been noticing that's been bugging me, and that is going to be condiments and the price that you're going to be seeing. Now, you may have noticed that lately condiments, and in particular hot sauces, have been getting more exotic and significantly more expensive. So today I'll show you a simple hot sauce that could save an avid consumer a lot of money. And don't forget to stay tuned till the end of the video to find out how much this will actually cost you and exactly how much time it will take. Now the first thing you're going to want to grab is a mango because we're going to be making the classic habanero mango hot sauce with a slight twist. So grab yourself a nice ripe mango for enhanced sweetness. And if you're not sure how to test a mango guys, it should be soft to the touch. Naturally, the next ingredient is going to be some habaneros. Now, I've got three or four of these, and I'm actually going to de-seed a few because we're going to be sharing this with some of our less spice-tolerant friends, but you could use scotch bonnets, you could use any real pepper that you like. Something spicy goes a long way, and don't be afraid to add more or less depending on your tolerance level. In my case, three or four with seeds would be ideal. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves one onion. Uh, a white onion is fine, ideally a Spanish onion that's a little bit on the sweeter side. Uh, you could also use red onion if you like, but this is what I had. Next up, you'll want to grab three or four cloves of garlic. Now, here I have three rather large ones, although I do think you could probably add a few more. Probably recommend more like five or six if you like garlic like I do. For an acidic note, and to add a bit of a preservative to our actual sauce, we're going to go with about a half a cup to about two-thirds of a cup of white vinegar. And depending on how much you like that tangy note, you can always add a little bit more, but I do recommend not going overboard here because it will dilute all the other flavors and sort of take over our sauce. Now to start balancing out that vinegar, we're actually going to hit this with some orange juice. Now this is a bit maybe of a weird one, but I like to add a little bit of this to my hot sauce. It gives a nice sweet note and also gives it a bit of that acidity and mellows it all out. It also adds a little bit more to the color and goes very well with our mango. So you'll only want to add a teeny tiny amount of this and that's going to be about one eighth of a cup. Now, despite all the sweetness that you might think we're getting from our mango and our orange juice, we're actually going to need a bit more and we've got options from brown sugar to honey to maple syrup. Now, you could feasibly use any of these, but like any good Canadian, the choice here is obvious. That's right, we're going with maple syrup, and there's nothing you can do about it. In any case, whatever you decide to use for your extra hit of sweetness, you're going to want about two or three tablespoons of that ingredient. Next, you want to grab two bell peppers. We're only going to use half of each, both for color and texture, and we're going to actually roast these along with our onion, garlic, and the rest of our aromatics. And yeah, there'll be a roasting pan. It's going to add a lot of flavor, so these are going to go in along with it. And for seasoning, you're going to go pretty standard here with some kosher salt uh, to taste, so about one or two large pinches should do, as well as several healthy spins on the old pepper mill. And there you go, guys. There are all the ingredients you're going to need for this amazing hot sauce. Now, of course, you can customize the heck out of this, both in terms of sweetness, heat, and acidity, but I'll let you decide how you want to make it. Oh, and since we're on the topic of things that are sweet and spicy, that reminds me. B-roll. With that sweet and spicy b-roll out of the way we've got no time to waste and we need to prep our ingredients so we're going to start with our habaneros which unfortunately yes we're going to dc because we are sharing with a few friends who don't like super spicy stuff but like i said definitely you can customize this to your liking in this case i'm going to leave a few of them with the seeds and a few of them without oh also i recommend wearing gloves for safety reasons but i don't know i'm just a guy on youtube Anyways, to prep these, you just want to take the tops off and then cut these in half and de-seed the ones that you feel you want to de-seed, and then just do this over and over again until you've got all your habaneros ready. And again, don't touch your eyes after doing this. Now, for those of you that like your hot sauces spicy, I know this hurts to watch, but do remember that if you're going to be sharing this, uh, not everyone loves really spicy things, so do be careful. When you're all done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, and you can see we kept a few of the seeds. So with that down, we're going to move on to our garlic, which we're going to slap down here on the table and give this a rough chop. Again, don't forget that all of our veggies and aromatics are going to go roast in a pan. 
Next up is your bell pepper, which you're gonna go ahead and slice into four pieces, keeping all of those seeds in the middle. And you don't have to worry too much about slicing the smaller guys because it's gonna go in a pan and larger surface area here is going to help. If this is too big, you can always cut this in half, but anything smaller than that is a waste of your time. With that done, we're gonna prep our onion, which means we're gonna cut this in half, peel the skin off, and we're done. So yeah, that was it, nice and easy. Uh, moving on, it's mango time. So go ahead and grab your mango, and uh, yeah, I'm never really sure how to cut these, but basically look for the pit in the middle, and there you go. You can kind of see we have this hard side, and we're gonna just go around the edges of it and get as much of the flesh off of this mango as we can. Now I'm not sure what the correct way to actually prep a mango is, so if you know, let me know in the comments down below. But I like to just kind of do it like this, get some sort of nice pieces off and just simply open this up a little bit like a reverse sort of potato skin or something. And then you can slide your knife along this and get all these nice cubes off without actually cutting any of the flesh or the skin from the outside. Now again, is this the most efficient or safest way of doing this? I don't think so, but maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. With the fleshy jewels of this mango harvested, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and, well, do this to the other side, which we're just gonna speed up for the sake of time. And again, this may not be the most efficient way, so do whatever you think works best for you, and that'll work just fine. With a mango prep, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. And there you go, guys. That is all of the prep work that we have to do. It's pretty crazy how quick that goes by. Super efficient. But the next thing we have to do is get our cast iron pan on medium high heat and put everything in there. And by everything, I mean this. And by this, I mean not the mango. So we're going to go ahead and put this on our pan. And the reason we want fairly high heat and a dry pan, that means no oil, is so that we can get some nice char. The charring is going to help blister the skin, give it a nice black color, and also just give it a lot of flavor. Just make sure you keep an eye on it so you don't actually fully burn anything like I did with a few pieces of the garlic. Now the ingredients are going to cook for varying times here, so you're going to have to keep an eye on it, but roughly this takes anywhere from 7 to 8 minutes. After about five or six minutes, you're gonna to wanna to start flipping things over and taking a look. You can see our onion's looking pretty good, but it needs a bit more time. And all the peppers are gonna start getting a nice bit of black charring on the skin. This means it's time to start flipping things over and moving things around. What you're looking for is something that looks a little bit like this. Again, a light char and not black charcoal. Once you're happy with the amount of char on your ingredients, you're gonna take your blurry ingredients because apparently my camera can't focus and remove them from the heat. And what you should be left with is something that looks a little bit like this. Now we're gonna cut down a few of our ingredients so they'll fit a little bit more easily in our blender. So we're gonna go ahead and chop up our onion, followed by our bell peppers, which are very hot, and I, again, shouldn't be touching these. Anyways, second degree burns aside, once you're done cutting up all of these veggies down to size, it is time to grab your blender. So go ahead and place that down on your workstation and just throw everything in there. With the onions and peppers thrown in from an unnecessary height, it is time to add the rest of your ingredients. So grab your plate of nicely charred habaneros and garlic and go ahead and toss those in. To that, you're going to add your bowl of freshly chopped mango, followed by a healthy pinch of salt and a few spins on the pepper mill. Then it's finally time to add your liquid, so go ahead and add your two-thirds of a cup of white vinegar before pouring in your one-eighth to about a quarter cup of orange juice. Then you're going to add to that sweetness with about two or three tablespoons of maple syrup. Then you just drop your lid snugly in place before moving to the actual blender, which we're going to have to show you up close and personal. Now, you could blend this as much as you like. Some people like this to be somewhat chunky. Now, I want a pretty smooth consistency. I don't want a salsa. I want a sauce. So I'm going to blend this for about 45 seconds to about a minute and a half. So that's done. You should have something that looks a little bit like this. It's really fragrant, has a nice consistency, and we're gonna just show you exactly what that looks like. And you can see, guys, we have little flecks of our habanero, a nice orange color, and it's gonna taste pretty good. Now, this turned out pretty balanced. It's acidic, it's got that spice, and it's got that depth of flavor, but I do recommend letting this sit in the fridge for a little while before you eat it, because it's just gonna let all of those ingredients get to know each other. Now, again, I said I didn't want anything chunky, so we're gonna take this to the next level of smoothness, so grab yourself a large bowl and a strainer, and we're gonna go ahead and dump our sauce right in there. We're gonna do our best to pass this through this fine sieve. It's gonna take a little while. This actually took me a little longer than I would like to admit, about four or five minutes of stirring, which was not ideal, but you'll be able to get all those impurities out and get a very smooth texture at the end, and I think this is well worth it. Now, again, if you're looking to save a little time and you don't mind the texture difference, go ahead and basically put this in a jar and you're done. But for us connoisseurs of the hot sauce world, we like a smooth consistency, so we're gonna go ahead and put in that extra elbow grease. 
So at the end of all that extra work, you should be left with this sort of paste at the end. You can kind of see it's not going through and it's clumping together. And we're gonna go ahead and toss that in the bin. And because we wanna transfer this into a mason jar and have more dishes to clean, we're gonna go ahead and dump this into our measuring cup. And as you can see, we have two full cups of this strained, amazing hot sauce. Now we just gotta grab a clean mason jar and go ahead and put our hot sauce in there. I'd say do your best not to spill, but let's be honest, if you're like me, you're probably gonna spill at least a little bit, but don't worry, that's just part of the fun. And with that done, go ahead and put your lid on and clean up the outside of the jar where you may or may not have spilt anything. And once you've done that, guys, we're done. That is our habanero maple mango hot sauce. It is amazing how quick this comes together and you can see the amazing colors, texture, and of course, the aroma and flavors. This will go well with any meal, particularly for those eggs in the morning or for something just to kick up a rice dish as I was doing. But for those wondering, this will only set you back about 30 or 35 minutes to make, depending on if you use a fine sieve, and it will only cost you about $1.85 per 200 milliliters or about six or seven ounces. And the best thing about this, guys, is you can customize the heat, the flavoring, and the acidity as much as you like, and it just makes a really amazing topping for most of your meals. So hopefully you give this recipe a shot and try to save yourself a little money while you're at it. With that being said, guys, thanks so much for watching until the end of this video. As always, thumbs if you liked it, thumbs if you loved it. We will see you in the next one.